Selamat pagi tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Happy good morning to ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Asia E webinar series. Today we shall be discussing the impact of smart technologies on supply chain development. Organizations around the world have turned their attention to digitality because of considerable benefits it brings through for firms. In this webinar, the digital supply chain is defined as a bundle of interconnected activities that are involved in supply chain processes between suppliers and customers, which are handled with novel technologies. In order to reap the benefit of the digital supply chain, there is a need to leverage novel approaches, including digital transformation with technologies. Therefore, the digital supply chain must be built on both digital transformation and smart technologies. Smart technologies refer to entities where physical devices or processes are complemented with the, the smart properties or digital technologies. The benefits of smart technologies are clearly indicated by the growing prospect of combining software and software components and mixing contents across platforms, infrastructures and production system. This webinar shall discuss how smart technologies can fully exploit the possibility of digital transformation, especially in the post-COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we are fortunate to have three distinguished speakers uh, for the uh, webinar. And may I introduce you, Major T.S. Chang Ka Lun, Professor of Practice Logistic, Senior Logistician, is the President of the Society of Logistician Malaysia and Director of AK Shipping. The second speaker is Logistician Leong, Ka, Leong, sorry, Leong Kim Wah. He is an MBA graduate from uh, HAE University and currently a Secretary General to the Society of Logistician Malaysia as well as a Managing Director of EW Logistic and Transport Malaysia in the the third speaker is Dr. Durai Rash Viraya, or professionally called Rash. And he's an alumni or PhD alumni at Asia E, and currently is a founder and principal consultant at DNSF Consulting Asia Pacific. My name is Xiao, and I shall be moderating this uh, uh, webinar. And uh, just for Procedure-wise, in terms of procedures, the moderator shall present the same issues to the three speakers, followed by their responses and question. The, the, the subsequent questions from the moderator shall be addressed to another speaker on a rotational basis. After all the speakers have given their views, we will have a short uh, question and answer to summarize the topic for today. It is to be reminded that this webinar shall refrain from discussing any sensitive issues that involve politics, race, and religion. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, especially the speakers, welcome to the HAE webinar. First question is posed to uh, Major Chong and followed by uh, Mr. Leong and uh, Dr. Rush. For decades, firms have considered collaborative relationship as opportunities to make sure that their supply chain is effective and responsive to market transition. Many companies such as IBM, Dell, Hello Bucket, and Procter & Gamble were able to achieve competitive advantages and lower transaction costs through strong long-term relationship with their partners. My question, what are the collaborative relationship and how to build strong long-term relationship. Over to you, Major. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Xiao. Uh, first of all, allow me to express my very sincere thanks to Asia E University for inviting me to be on board uh, this particular session for my very humble sharing of uh, my experience in the area of uh, smart uh, supply chain right thank you very much uh, to asia e university and of course uh, it is my pleasure uh, to have the opportunity to sit down together with another two uh, very experienced and uh, knowledgeable 
uh, speakers uh, uh, for this particular day. I would call it uh, the day uh, of uh, Asia e University. Of course, today, as far as uh, supply chain is concerned, right, uh, we cannot run away from the technology. Right, we cannot run away from the technology. And of course, uh, why technology today? Because of the transformation or the transfiguration of our industry. Right? So, of course, as a logistician or as a practicing logistician, we are always ready for the transformation or transfiguration when it comes to technology. Of course, uh, when it comes to technology, of course, we have many sectors or many area uh, to explore. But for today, I would like to speak from the perspective of maritime logistics. Why I mentioned log maritime logistics? Simply because according to the United Nations, maritime uh, has dominated more than 90% of the world uh, transactions or world business transaction. So that's why it allowed me to take this opportunity to speak uh, from the area of maritime logistics. Of course, over the years, we can see a lot of changes in our maritime logistics. Of course, when it comes to the method of handling, we can see the first change is the containerization has now come into the picture. Containerization has started from 70s right so today that's why even containerization is classified as a so-called capital intensive right but we still need to go along with the containerization that's why today uh, the largest vessel can even carry up to 24000 containers or in the terms we call it deus so in short now the largest vessel can carry up to 24,000 TEUs, one go. So this is, I would say, the first transformations as far as maritime logistics is concerned. Of course, a lot of people would agree with me that uh, actually logistic business is classified as an intangible business. Why intangible business? Because we need to do a lot of human interactions. Even today, we have the technology, the support from the technology, but we still need to have human interactions simply because our nature of business is intangible business. So, of course, how do we tie up with the customers or how do we tie up with the exporters or importers? Okay. Of course, we have various uh, methods or we have various means of approach. Of course, when it comes to business transactions, I would suggest or we would like to suggest exporters, importers or traders to go for contract. But of course, when it comes to contract, now we have global contract tender, we have regional contract tender as far and also the local contract uh, tender. So we have various type of contract tenders today uh, with the support from the technology. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, why technology? As far as a logistician is concerned, we look at time saving, money saving, and importantly, we like to save paperwork. We want to reduce the paperwork, right? So uh, that's why today uh, it is good to have this particular session so that we can share, right? So I pass the mic back to our professor. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the uh, interruption. And uh, uh, my next question is posed to logistician Leon. Uh, the question is what are collaborative relationship and how to build strong long-term relationship? Over to you, logistician Leon. Yeah, thank you, uh, Professor Self. Good morning to everybody, uh, Dr. Raj, uh, Major Chang. Okay, so uh, supply chain today are uh, required to deliver even a better service level while simultaneously bearing down on costs and meeting aggressive new sustainability agendas. This has to be achieved 
again, a background of long-term fundamental changes in customer behavior, priorities, and expenditure. Thus, the supply chain is clearly need to secure the competitive advantages for continued long-term sustainability in business. The COVID pandemic has created additional operation costs, whether through COVID-specific social distancing requirements and special cleaning measures, risk mitigations by changing product sourcing from various countries once the uh, uh, main supply supplier country are locked down, or through accelerated shift to e-commerce, requiring a greater investment in people and assets, but with a tightened margin. The lower demand in retail business and the increasing of e-commerce that require more warehouse and more trucks, which in short supply in short term, balancing is needed and capacity across supply chain through wider collaboration, especially to work with third party logistic and supply chain operator. The organization will no longer running in isolation, but to work with partners to cut waste, improve operational efficiency, reducing costs and driving up the service performance. Basically, collaboration can be horizontal, vertical or both. Vertical co collaborations between a retailer, logistics partners and various tier of the supply chain. Horizontal co collaborations, especially between business that are same extent competitors, can even more contentious, can sharing a distributor, retailer or consolidate deliveries. Multiple suppliers can collaborate to share resources like transport and warehousing arrangement. Customer won't care if the products of P&G and Unilever arrive as Tesco outlet on the same trucks. Okay, Supply chain collaboration has a lot of benefits. Sharing fixed and mobile assets could reduce the investment required. The limited supply of logistics talents, warehouse and trucking must be fully utilized and optimized. Significant collaboration thus require additional change, breaking down preconceptions and often forgetting previous history. This will be a win-win situation to all parties, including customer, consumer, can enjoy the lower costing products with similar quality. Yeah, that's all my sharing. Pass back to the professor. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, logistician uh, Leon. And uh, now we would like to uh, have your views from Dr. Durai Raj. Um, thank you, Prof. Siao. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's nice to be back with the AU in person. Um, I'm at the library now, so it's um, really a great pleasure. 2016 is when I finished my PhD. Um, thanks to you and the excellent faculty that we have in AU that helped me through the six year journey of finishing my PhD. Thank you, Prof. Siao. Um, you, I will jump straight to address a question that you have raised. You have talked about collaborative relationships and how to build them. Um, when talking about uh, collaborative rela rela relationships, uh, there are several dimensions to look at it. Um, I look at uh, these relationships uh, from two dimensions, coming from a manufacturer shipper perspective for, for 36 years and then now going into consulting. Uh, looking at uh, collaborative partnerships, I look at it from two level. One is on a B2B perspective. That means a relationship between a company, the, fo the, the, the focus company, and its suppliers, for example. That's one dimension. And the other dimension is, of course, in terms of this company, then working with service providers. So here suppliers could be um, raw material suppliers, um, other other. Uh, uh, other, other other packaging material suppliers and the other side is service providers who provide services from a logistics perspective to be specific in, in the context of what we are discussing the covid pandemic the covid pandemic has, has has brought in a significant rethink in terms of looking at this collaborative partnership especially from the dimension of strategic sourcing and procurement we see that very much so. Uh, if you speak to um, purchasing managers, logistics managers, the COVID pandemic was a big um, rethink in their in their in the decisions that they have made. If you look at activities before two zero one nine, procurement activities, collaborative relationship activities, strategic sourcing activities were focused on a few things: on keeping it lean as possible, as efficient as possible as few suppliers and vendors as possible 
all these dimensions that they had, even textbooks talks about it as well. All these dimensions were needed. There was a need to rethink these dimensions. Company has to has to go. Many companies had to go back to the drawing board to review their collaborative relationships. They needed to look again now. Look here. Now my supplier is not capable of delivering, but I have only one supplier. Why I develop one supplier? Because I want to have the most leanest operation, lowest transaction costs. All these dimensions were now challenged. All of a sudden, yes, my strategies that I had in terms of single sourcing is invalid anymore. My strategies that I have, I want to have lean operation as possible, were not valid anymore. My strategies in terms of managing my inventories as lean as as low as possible were not valid anymore. So there was a there is a major rethink at the moment among manufacturers at the moment to look at their their, their collaborative relationships. It's not a question of efficiency anymore. It's a question of effectiveness. It's a, not a question of being lean. It's a question of how do I build in redundancies into my into my supply chain? I need extra inventories. It's not a question of single sourcing. It's a question of how do I have multiple sourcing? How do I ensure some of those activities? So I think there is a major rethink that's happening in terms of looking at collaborative relationships and how to build them at the moment. Do I have a specific answer to move forward? No, I think this is what a challenge that many of the logistics managers, supply chain directors of large companies were doing at the moment, simply because the notions that they have before the pandemic has to be revisited anyway. A lot of companies have not thought about disruptions, for example. They, talk, they, they only focus on single disruptions. But when it comes to multiple disruptions, which means basically products cannot move, supplies cannot come in, customers cannot get the products, supplies, service providers were not able to provide the services. There were multiple disruptions with that. And in a lean environment, such a model will not work, has failed. So that is why now logistics uh, uh, manufacturers have gone back to look at it. Guys, you need to build it. My, my, my notion is that you need to think about your cost-based model. You look, need to look at it from an effectiveness perspective and not efficiency. You need to look at your inventories again. You, need, you may need to carry much more inventories you cannot work on a lean operation anymore. You need to rethink your single sourcing strategy as well. You need to consider multiple sourcing strategies. This is my perspective, uh, Prof. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Raj. Uh, it seems that the uh, three of you has agreed uh, that strong, uh, long-term collaborative relationship is essential in supply chain here. So we move to the next uh, question. Uh, this is posed to uh, Logistician uh, Leon, first, uh, the question, the, the scenario, the digitally has, di sorry, digitality has changed the way that both companies and individuals interact and communicate with each other. Therefore, in order to exploit digitalization in business, companies should consider all the necessary procedures, strategies, and tools needed to move towards the digital supply chain. The question, what are the necessary procedures, strategies, and tools needed to move towards the digital supply chain? Uh, Logistician Yong. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Professor uh, Xiao. Okay. In a typical supply chain, the flow of goods and services involves sourcing and procuring raw material and parts, designing and making a product, estimating the demand, arranging sales channel and logistics and then providing customer with a visibility into their orders. A digital supply chain, in contrast, provides significantly more visibility into the working of the chain. It is the process of integrating and applying advanced digital technologies into supply chain operations, from procurement data, inventory management, to transportation and distributions. The ultimate goal of supply chain digitalization is to enable insights for greater efficiencies and facilitate greater profits. Company with digital supply chain transformation can better move their resources, people, asset and inventory to where they are needed at any given time to reduce the cost by responding proactively to transportation and manufacturing risks. Okay. 
The potential payoff of fully realized digital supply chain includes saving in every area, including time, resources, money, and reduced environmental footprints. So basically, we can summarize like digital supply chain benefits into five accessory innovations, better decision making, end to end customer engagement, organizational flexibility, and increases of automations. Okay, what will be the text? What will be the technologies for the uh, digital transformations? We summarize we have the e commerce integrations, we have blockchains, we have Internet of Things, we have artificial intelligence, uh, we have supply chain digital twins. Okay. So how? We have few steps. What is the steps to make it digitalization in the supply chain? Okay. Moving from a traditional supply chain to digital supply chains is a complex process. But taking the first step is essential if you want to reap the maximum benefits of digital transformations. Here are the steps. There are some, some steps. We can say there is uh, five steps. Okay. Five steps. The first one is define a vision. The first step for implementing digital transformation in the supply chain is to define a clear vision. Make sure that the vision is aligned with your enterprise goals. These goals can be related to your business objective, such as better and faster decision making, automated operations, and improve of supply chain visibility. The second step is unify data and processes. Use a unified platform to gain complete end-to-end -end supply chain visibility Utilized the enhanced transparency for streamlining core functions, including inventory management, warehouse management, demand forecasting, and logistics. The main objective is to increase visibility for every role and process across the extended supply chain. The third step, automated the planning process. With automated planning, we can simply task and derive meaning from large volume of data, meaning from the big data, replace routine or recurring tasks with automated processes. But do not automate processes that involve complex situations or require collaboration between planners. Number four, use data and analytics. Supply chain leaders need to access to real-time data to make informed decisions. It's also helped them deal effectively with partners, suppliers, other related functions. Real-time data also helped identify potential disruptions and increases visibility across the supply chain. So in transportation industry or logistics, we can say it's GPS, okay, global uh, positioning system. You can track the real time of the uh, cargo movement or shipment movement. Or the IFID system, you can scan and trace your stock and inventory level at real-time basis. Moreover, you can use AI-powered analytical tools to improve planning processes and draw actionable insights. For instance, using analytics, you can help prevent an out-of-stock situation and adjust inventory accordingly by the automated replenishment system. Okay, the last one align people with processes even you shift to a digital supply chain it would be futile if your team members were not aligned and not involved and not be trained with the new techniques and processes this shift should integrate technologies with processes people and management all are equally important without such integrations teams may not be able to achieve the desired result in the new business model. Okay, uh, Professor Sell, this is my sharing. Thank you, thank you, uh, Logistician Leong, and uh, we move to Dr. Raj. What is your uh, take on this? Um, again, um, based on my experience as well, and I'm engaging since I came back to Malaysia, uh, the word digital transformation is uh, has got a very wide definition. It's sometimes misused. It's a buzzword to great extent as well for me. Uh, because what is digitalization? What is digital transformation? Um, because if you look at IT, to be exact, because digital, therefore, is underpinning is IT. IT was considered an enabler before. And of course, other capabilities are needed. So IT was an enabler to do business processes, enabler to do businesses. But in today's terms, IT is not an enabler anymore. It becomes the key driver. It is a prerequisite. It is a fundamental requirement for a business to exist. 
So again, what does that actually mean, transformation for something that needed for, in a basic level? So if you ask a, 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 a large SME, they would be talking about digitalization in the use of drones, in the use of IoT, using machine learning, etc. They're talking of VR. Whereas if you ask a small SME, digitalization basically means him for him or her moving away from three, five Excel spreadsheets to maybe buy a simple ERP software like SQL or, or Sage UBS. So that is also considered digitalization. So again, that is why we need to look at digitalization from a broader perspective on the context of who we are talking about. Large manufacturers, this is it. Service providers, they've got their requirements where they need to digitalize. SMEs have got their own set of steps that they need to move to digitalization as well. So, so in order to look at digitalization, we need to also look at like a mix in terms of who needs this form of digitalization. I'm moving away from especially companies which are brick and mortar. Companies of your brick and mortar look at digitalization. They need a transformation strategy. But companies which are digital natives, companies which from day one, they're underpinning Grab, for example, Amazon.com, Amazon for example, those companies, they are digital natives. They are underpinning their fundamentals are based on technology already. So again, do they do, 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 do those companies need to undergo transformation? they don't need to think about transformation because that is their bread and butter whereas the companies which are brick and mortar companies which are traditional may have to think about uh, uh, steps to digitalize themselves so that's where we need to look at okay there's some myths in the sense of who needs to digitalize some companies say, oh only because grab and shopee and all the digital i packaging material manufacturer do not need to digitalize so there are companies who say oh I don't do much B2C, so therefore I do not need to digitalize because I don't have to face customers. But there is a significant opportunity for efficiency gains if companies which are doing B2B as well. I'm buying raw materials, I'm selling to another manufacturer, I'm just a toller, I'm a contract manufacturer, a small time contract manufacturer. There are opportunities for them to gain efficiencies, to gain efficiency, reduce costs, and well, move away from manual processes via digitalization and then the, the other option is oh only companies which are on online business needs to do that companies which requires customer services needs to do that customer companies which has got um, customers to serve on a b2c perspective but then there are if you look at it on a broader context of digitalization and if you look at traditional industries banking has undergone significant transformation as well infrastructure companies for example the telcos are undergoing transformation as well in terms of how they reach out to customers, how they manage their process, how they work with their contractors, etc. Manufacturing companies also look at it and say, how do I then work with, 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 with my partners and transform, automate my processes? F&B, for example, simple restaurants, how do I reach to my customers as well? How do I then use technology to reach out customers, although I'm having a physical goods Yes, I'm selling a physical good, a plate of spaghetti, but then how am I reaching out to my customers digitally? So there are also opportunities for transformation for, for different industries, but it just got to be seen from the context of it as well. The other one is cost. Cost, of course, if you look at a comprehensive ERP implementation, can be very, very costly. SAP, if you're implementing SAP, or if you're looking at uh, Microsoft three, um, uh, Business One, even Business One, for example, is, is costly. But then we need to consider that these requirements are needed because it's not about it's not about it's not about yes I need it or not. It's about basics. How do then I create value for my customers? How do I create revenue to this digitalization space? So again, the cost dimension is something that has to be considered. And you see now cost dimensions are handled by a, a different business models, for example. You don't have to have significant investments into technology now. You can go for software as a service to cloud, cloud computing. There's also opportunities for, 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 for smaller companies, companies which have got smaller budgets, to even look at digital transformation. So that is my take regarding digital okay. transformation. Overall. Thank you, Dr. Raj. And um, uh, we move to... Major Logistician uh, Chang, the question was, what are the necessary procedures 
strategies and tools needed to move towards the digital supply chain. Over to you, Major. Sure. Thank you, Professor. So the key word here is uh, transformations or transfigurations, right? Today, of course, we can talk basing from the uh, perspective of service provider, like what uh, Dr. Raj mentioned just now. Of course, we have another angle from the manufacturing uh, area or versions, right? So in short, we have to go in line. We all must go in line with the transformation and transfiguration. As I mentioned just now from the very beginning, as far as maritime logistics is concerned, we have containerization now. Containerization has permitted cargo or movement, right? From A to B, B to C, C to D, via intermodalism as well as multimodalism. We make the technology, make intermodal and multimodal possible. Of course, if you ask me as a logistician, our digital supply chain or digital technology or technology is not standardized because of competitions and a company has their formula b company has their formula so today as the manufacturer or as the trader if we would like to appoint a freight forwarder or logistic firm we have to go in line with that particular formula or the system for example our system our company we have our own system we have virtual system and this particular virtual system is being used by our company because that particular application is developed for our company only right example right so a a company you have to go in line with the a company formula right so that's why as i said applications or technology is not standardized but we have to make sure that the trust is there we have to make sure the trust is there once you have appointed the freight forwarder or logistic company we have to make sure that the trust is there and go in line with the transformations and the sectors or aspects of the technology of course today in our technology world we have a lot of big words right we have big data we have blockchain we have iot we have ai right we have drone right we have cloud-based uh, technology all these are very general right but two individual company we have our own set of applications of course we must go in line with the general aspects as well like what i mentioned just now ai iot uh, blockchain drones all these are general words but i would like to remind all manufacturer or friends down there that we have to trust our freight forwarder or so-called the appointed logistic company that once we have uh, tied up the deal or sign the contract we have to go in line with the system even today eh, we would like to place the booking we need system right you need documents you need to have system right you need to print out your bill of lading you need to have the system even after your documentations when you have to do declarations with the respective authority you also need to have a system but each one of the company has their own system even when it comes to ship planning we used to have manual ship planning right we have to start drawing the storage plan right uh, start calculating the weight of the container where to put the container to make sure the balancing of the ships we call that as storage planning but today we have the ship masters right we have the ship master so this particular ship master you just have to key in all the data or all the information into the system so that particular system right will calculate for you then they will tell you uh, which uh, bay to to store your container of course it is not the duty of the manufacturer or trader to decide but that is the duty of the terminal operator because terminal operator will have to deal with the uh, service provide, provider uh, central planner so central planner is actually making use of the 
ship planning system to plan the ship. Even they go according to the port of discharge, port of uh, loading, and go according to the weight. And today, context, uh, because of the size of the ship, today is very big. Of course, as I mentioned, the largest vessel can even carry up to 24,000 containers one go. But we all must be careful as well. Nothing is perfect. We have to ensure that our information is accurate. That's why the IMO, International Maritime Organization, has implemented the SOLAS, uh, Safety of Life at Sea. Basically, SOLAS is to ensure that your weight declarations is there and must be certified by third party. All these can be carried out through the system. Right? So, uh, in our maritime logistic uh, system, everything is all about uh, applications, right? Right from, as I mentioned, right from the uh, booking, uh, the booking process, documentation, declarations, or even the tracking of uh, your cargo, or even the returning of your empty containers, or your bank transaction, all these are done through the system or uh, applications. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have to go uh, in line with the individual applications. Uh, so that's all. Uh, thank, thank you, Major. That's uh, very interesting to, uh, to know that there are several procedures and also uh, uh, strategies and tools to uh, as an en enabler for supply chain, uh, digital supply chain. Uh, we move to the third question. And I, we would like uh, Dr. Raj to uh, take on this. Uh, the uh, smart technologies refer to entities where physical devices and processes are complemented with smart properties of digital technologies. Research studies have indicated that smart technologies as an important tool to turn digital transformation of the company into increased relationship performance. In short, smart technologies are the mediators in the digital supply chain. What are the smart technologies and how can firms exploit smart technologies to benefit firm performance? Uh, Dr. Raj and um, Logistician Leong just now, you mentioned that COVID has uh, in a way disruptive, being disruptive here. So let's uh, also listen to your views on um, how uh, COVID-19 and also put, uh, how would be the situation after COVID-19? Over to you, Dr. Raj. Um, okay, let me let me just touch on the topic of uh, smart technologies. Um, when you look at smart technologies, I tend to see it from two dimensions, so the device-based technology, and let's call it the non-device-based technology. It could be a software, it could be a platform, it could be even the language, the IT language in, in which uh, uh, systems are set up as well. So that's, that's how we need to look at uh, smart technologies. Again, uh, then coming back to smart technologies, um, my observation, maybe it's only my personal observation. I, it's, again, I feel just like digital transformation, this another word like is, is used as the buzzword. Who uses the most... I think the private equity guys did, did, are doing very well. They're doing very well to promote smart technologies. You look at Grab, look at Gojek and other uh, technology solutions that's out there. Um, it attracts smart, the word smart technology attracts uh, investments. Um, for me, yeah, yes, but there are a lot of challenges in terms of uh, ensuring these investments will provide the return the technology is promising. Uh, before that, let's look at, before I come back to the argument, let's look at the type of uh, smart technologies. It can start a simple sensor, for example, a simple device. Uh, which, and of course, you can go to the complex like an a, uh, artificial intelligence. That's a smart technology. VR, virtual reality is a smart technology. Augmented reality, machine learning, internet of things, use of blockchain. So there are many different technologies out there. But the trick is what is relevant for you and what is the noise and what is really, really needed. I've come across in my consulting practice where 
um, individuals who are actually promoters, uh, promoters of, of fun, fun, funders to be actually promoters of funders. Uh, talks about blockchain where those solutions are not really necessary. A distributor talking talking to distributor and said you need a blockchain solution. I said no, you don't need a blockchain solution because you're not you're just a distributor. You're not even manufacturing it because you need to have the source so that you can monitor whether it's a contract or some form of uh, information which is in a secured manner. So we need to be very careful when you use the word um, smart technology. And then when we use the word, when we go down, look at what exactly are you talking about? Are you talking about virtual reality? Where do you want to use it in your manufacturing process? How successful is it going to be? Or you're talking about a warehouse and you want to automate the warehouse by using a WMS system and I'm going to put a big device device and how are you going to implement this device when your workers can't even speak English and you've got problems about attrition because you need to have a voice pick to voice technology for example you need to ensure that the voice is able to be deciphered so there are technologies smart technologies out there which is available in many cases these smart technologies are in the formative stage they are experimental to a certain extent as well there are many many players out there because they are able to attract investor funds and then they just there was a few seed funding they are out there trying to roll something out and then these solutions may be applicable may not be applicable as well and then when you're talking about smart technologies one technology does not work in isolation it has to work in a community it needs to sit in a system so therefore you may have a smart technology like a device but your network is not there how do you then basically effectively use your net your 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 device or you may want to implement in your organization but your your business partners are not ready for it then how do you want to implement these smart technologies so again the the the, the notion out there to say a smart technologies will digitalize transform businesses i am very very cautious about it simply because just on my personal experience i've seen that you have to take baby steps you need to find a coordinated approach that you need to bring all these technologies together. Only then they can apply. Only then they can be meaningful. Otherwise, these are all experiments which can produce results or it could also fail. And the challenge now is whether a company, a provider or anyone would like to take the risk to experiment with the technology because simply because there are many competitive technologies out there and you must be very, very careful when you select them. Do you want to be the, 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 the trailblazer who want to try it first or do you want to take the, the, the follow-up because you want to take only technology which are proven? So those are the strategies that one has to take. So coming to the next point regarding smart technologies, which becomes very, very, very important for manufacturers, maybe also applicable for others as well, that do you have the internal capability within your organization to discriminate and evaluate these smart technologies. Are you able to say, yes, this is relevant for me because so and so and so, this is not right for me, this is not what I'm ready for. So you need to have very good internal capability, your logistics managers, your IT managers, your CFOs have got to have the capability to evaluate all these things because vendors are out there. If you, if, you, if you Google now, there's so many vendors regarding smart technologies. How do you then, aim, are, you, are you able, do you have the internal capability to evaluate, evaluate these requirements, these, these possibilities, and then decide, yeah, this is my requirement. You need to be very, very careful there. That is where, that is why in some cases it's important. If you do not have internal capabilities, you need to work with the right consultants as well. You need to get the right people in to provide the right independent advice. Because if we rely entirely on the software solution provider who's talking about blockchain or the other provider who wants to talk about the AI implementation or you need to have a machine learning solution or he wants to automate your warehouse, you need to be able to make up your mind by yourself, not to be driven by the recommendations, entirely recommendations and the proposals and the ideas and the stories and the dream that is sold by vendors as well. So that's, that's I take a very, very risk averse approach to this topic.
Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the, thank you, Dr. Raj. Um, Major, what is your take on this? Uh, anything to add? Or anything to, uh, to uh, uh, talk about it? Sure, sure, sure. Thank you, uh, Professor. As I mentioned just now, uh, we have a lot of big words now as far as technology is concerned. If you ask me, as a practitioner for years, uh, we can see the transformations or transfigurations over the years. Today, a lot of big words. That's why we can see a blockchain, drone, crowd, right? We have IoT, we have uh, even the, a lot. We have a lot of big words today, big data. But all these are general, as I mentioned just now. What we need to do is we have to go individually according to the preference by your service provider, right? And of course, people or internal, we have to look at internal and external, right? Internal, we have to make sure the training is there that all those are trained according to our own system. And external, we also must make sure that their system are matched right or are map with our system so that uh, external and internal can go in line and achieve our objective or so-called the requirements ladies and gentlemen it is the word right and we have a lot of big words behind this particular it but uh, nevertheless uh, people like us we must uh, go in line with the transformations right and as i mentioned IT is not standardized, right? It may change or it may uh, vary from time to time, right? But importantly, we all must be trained from the basic, right? For example, maritime logistics, right? Even today, we are using the IT technologies or so-called the uh, digital technology or digital applications or whatever, but we must not forget the fundamental, the basic. For example, the Hagu rules, Hagu Wispy rules, Hamburg Rotterdam rules, Hamburg rules. All these cannot be replaced by the applications. And I would like to take this opportunity to remind uh, many protect, uh, practitioners that, as I mentioned, uh, today, even with the big words, eh, but we must not forget the fundamental, the basic. Uh, as far as our industry is concerned. As I mentioned, uh, a few uh, clauses, a few rules being used in our industry. And all those cannot be replaced by the technologies, right? For example, the terms, right? For example, terms FIO, free in and free out. For example, CYCY. For example, HKCY. For example, CYFO, all those are basics and cannot be replaced by the technology. Although technology is the trend, is the latest uh, practice that we have in our industry, but basic uh, fundamentals cannot be uh, left behind as well. So that's all uh, from me as far as... Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Major. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, what about... Um... Logistician Leong, uh, anything to add on this uh, uh, topic? Uh, yes, sure, Professor Xiao. So with the fast-growing and ever-changing market in the industry uh, of the supply chain, technology has opened up new methods and leads to new changes to supply chain sector worldwide. Smart technology utilizes like computers, communications, control, and sensing. Through the smart technology, we convert the conventional supply chain to digital supply chain. Many logistic uh, service provider have invested in a smart technology to improve their delivery quality and in inventory control. The improvement helps company to gain a competitive edge over competitor who are still on the conventional supply chain. Smart technology decrease the risk of traffic, reduce uh, energy waste, improve traffic congestion and air quality, it does not only improve the productivity of the logistics service provider sectors, but it also improves the quality of customer satisfaction, the application of smart technology that will bring about a digital supply chain. Okay, for example, like the IoT. So how IoT doing? IoT and smart gasket 
are becoming ever more essential for you in shipping industry worldwide in this era. IoT involves the use of gasket that are embedded with software, sensor, and other technology connecting to the internet and exchange data wirelessly. IoT gasket helps supply chain to handle shipment in a smarter way as it allows the monitoring of the environment, provide real-time goods movement, and reports the real-time status of the shipments based on the real success story of the Digitium. New Musli invested in new technology for managing their container using the remote control, remote container management system. They are able to rely on this system to implement and improve shipping planning as it allows them to monitor the container temperature and moisture. By monitoring the container's temperature and moisture, it prevents the risk of food spoilage and resource waste. Another real success story in the case of utilization of IoT device in supply chain operation is by Amazon. Amazon integrated their supply chain operation with robots for warehouse operations, which give a room for their employees to focus on their tasks like packing, wrapping, and inventory management. Okay, for example, the after the uh, post pandemic, the smart technology tools were able to process a big data from the global demand during the pandemic or post pandemic. The balance between supply and demand is crucial to ensure that there is not capacity wastage to produce the wrong product with low demand and causing overstock unnecessary inventory and short supply of demand volume search products. Supply chain manager must be able to cope with the rapid changes on the consumer behavior and distribution channel. Another example of post pandemic logistic and supply chain export of shipment from Malaysia to US and Europe. Traditional way is just direct export via a Malaysia airport or seaport to overseas country destinations. But now, due to the shortage of capacity and flight and vessel schedule, exporters need to explore the multimodal way to ship their product via overseas by truck or road transportation from the origin country, example Malaysia, then the trucking to Singapore, Thailand or Vietnam, even to China to transit via third country airport and seaport and then transit by air or sea freight to ship their products to overseas to US or Europe. This shown that the logistic or supply chain manager need to be flexible and creative by using the existing of smart technology, real-time information with multiple solutions to fulfill the customer needs by delivering the product in right time, right place, and right cost. Thank you, Dr. Xiao. Thank you, thank you, Logistician Liang. And uh, we move to the uh, last question uh, for, for today's uh, webinar. And I would like to pose this question to Major Liang. Uh, the, in order to adopt smart technologies, as it is challenging and time consuming, companies need to invest and have certain skills and understanding of what they seek to accomplish with technology. What are the challenges in adopting smart technologies and how to overcome these technologies? Over to you, uh, uh, Major Leong. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Xiao. Okay, basically, i um, summarize like four challenges. Okay, four challenges I summarize. Okay, the first one, cyber security. The interconnection and digitalization of the system is a key feature, meaning there are more devices connected to the Internet of Things, meaning IoT. Okay, this represents a massive cybersecurity challenge in terms of a data protection and intellectual property. We will need to implement a robust security system to protect against hacking and unintentionally data breaches. Just like a chain, these connected cyber physical systems are only as, as strong as the weakest link. Policy, processes, procedures should all be standardized to limit the amount of possible breach point in our systems. Okay. The second one is the change management. Embarrassing change is a secret to success for majority of companies. Digitalization is changing the way we're doing things, merging the physical and digital together. These changes reveal a need to strategize a way to support employees and empower them with the tools and skills needed during the transition. By putting employee at the center of the change, we enable the employee engagement at all stages. The human factor become a major level for transitioning to digitalization. It is common for collaborators who are open to change to join the terms as change champions. 
helping promote new technologies while helping colleagues adopt to new technology. So in, in basic uh, theory is that everybody need to be involved because they are interrelated in the organizations. The third one is employment. Smart technology is changing the employment landscape with the need for employee to acquire different level of skill and knowledges to excel in these changing roles. Repet repetitive task worker will face challenges in keeping up with industry as their job are phased out for handled by autonomous machine or by, replaced by a robot. Education will need to transform to keep up the demands of a rapidly changing labor market. So you need to send an employee for further improvement, the trainings, the upskill uh, courses. Last one, capital investment. Implementation will not be free. There will be a varying degrees of cost involved from cheap IoT sensors used on existing machines or the purchase of large machinery with integrated smart technology solutions. The capital investment needed for some of these larger projects might hurt the balance sheet or the PL performance of the organization in short term, but will have a multiplying effect in the long term by reducing our costs, increasing agility to market and customer satisfaction. So in overall summary, that technology is the trend. So for organizations that want to have the long term sustainability, you need to ride on this wave. Okay. Otherwise you will be far behind the trends. Thank you. Professor Thank you, uh, logistician Young. Uh, uh, Major, uh, I, I'm also thinking about the uh, smaller uh, SMEs and so on. So what are the uh, challenges you think these uh, in adopting smart technologies and how to overcome these uh, challenges? Uh, over to you, Major. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, training, uh, of course, is uh, the key word uh, when it comes to implementations, right? The training. Even today, we have the uh, money to invest uh, when it comes to smart technology, but we must even look at the training. So this is the story of uh, chicken first or egg first, lah, right? Or chicken or egg first. So to implement or to make sure we have a sustainable technology environment or technological environment, we need to have training plus the capital, right? Of course, even today, you have the money, you have the investment being put in, right? We need to have training. Training can be internal and can be external. And today, of course, we carry out our internal training and make sure that our internal staff or indoor staff are well trained, right? At the same time, because as I mentioned, IT is not standardized. It's not like the Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel or Microsoft PowerPoint or whatever, right? That is um, standard. But as far as logistic technology is concerned or application is concerned, it's not standard. So each individual company has its own applications. So today, let's say we have appointed a company to be our logistic provider. Then we have to buy or we have to subscribe to this particular logistic company applications. Then, of course, in-house, they do the training and they must make sure we all, the users, uh, be trained as well, right? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, IT is important. Application is important, right? IT can replace many job functions, many activities, but not everything, right? As I mentioned just now, certain activities or functions can be replaced by IT or smart technology, whatever, right? But certain area, we still need the people, the human development, right? At the same time. For example, as I mentioned, logistic business or supply chain business is an intangible business, right? We need a lot of interactions or human interactions. Okay, when it comes to mistake, when it comes to accident, you see in logistic area or our industry, we have mistakes as well, right? So when you have mistake, means dispute, 
how do we solve the dispute? We cannot ask a system or applications to solve the dispute for us. So we still need to have human interactions at the same time. So we need to carry out the mediations or arbitration activities. So as I mentioned or reminded, although we are now going towards the IT world, but we must not forget our basic or fundamental in our industry as far as logistic, transport and supply chain is concerned because we still have a lot of rules to be followed. We still have a lot of policies right, to be observed. A very common policy or rules are Hagu rules, Hagu Wisby rules, Hamburg rules and Rotterdam rules. Right. All this cannot be replaced by the technology or the smart technology right? or digital because all these are rules and those have been in place for over 100 of years. Oh, I, thank you, uh, Major Leong. I didn't know that there are so many rules uh, governing the supply chain. And, and uh, now we have the last speaker, the, uh, Dr. Raj. Uh, you, you have, uh, in, in, in the first question, you have touched uh, something about the uh, challenges and so on. So yep. uh, we would like uh, to continue. What are the challenges in adopting smart technologies and how to overcome these challenges? And uh, you also mentioned that the uh, different companies have their own challenges. So can you elaborate on that? Yeah, again, for me, um, looking at challenges, okay, I look at it from two dimensions, digital transformation and therefore adoption of, uh, of, of smart technologies. We need to look at that perspective. I think one of the challenges, many of you may not like it, is related to the current human resources itself. I'm talking about senior management. I'm talking about CFOs, I'm talking about supply chain directors, logistics managers, entrepreneurs, People who are in their 40s, late 40s and the 50s are, are on leadership roles at the moment. I think they have to recognize that they don't understand enough about technology. I think that is what one I've recognized. I profess to say that I do not understand technology enough. I'm 64 years old simply because of the technological changes that have happened. And at the moment, I see many of these companies, the leadership in who are responsible for transformation are leaders who do not fully understand what they are talking about. I mean, you, you may not like it, but that is what one has to recognize because the generation who are in their 30s, those generation, they are much more conversant. They are much more tech savvy. So again, if we then go back to, oh yes, it was defined by a 150 year old rule or defined by certain the Hague, you, you got all these rules that we're talking about, then we will not be able to make changes. That is, these persons are now sitting in leadership roles and they may be in some cases are the stumbling block to digital transformation. That's my take. I mean, please feel free to defer from me because they themselves do not understand enough. They do not understand enough and they then say that this is what is required. I've been doing all this while this way and therefore, this has got to be the future. And now I'm the decision maker. I'm the CFO. I'm the supply chain director. So therefore, because I do not understand, I do not need it. That's an easy way out at the moment. Simply that is why one of the things which is required is for supply chain leadership to understand they do not have enough knowledge about technological development that's out there. They are not, they will, they are not able to discriminate what is required for them what is necessary, what is not necessary, and what is required. I think this is one of the challenges that supply chain leadership, be it in any sector, whether manufacturing, distribution, service provider, you name it, even in banks, even in the hotel, you, they have to understand, or an entrepreneur is running a restaurant. They need to say, they need to recognize that they do not know enough. But then they are, in the, they are sitting in the role, they are making the decision, they are signing off the budget, they have to approve the budget. I think that is one of the challenges that we face at the moment in terms of digital transformation. That's one. Of course, it comes with the skills, whether they have the internal capability, if they do not have, they have a team who's capable enough to, to provide significant advice, or do they have consultants outside, be it the big force or others, 
providing them the right expertise to make those decisions, challenging the norm. I, there are solutions, there are rules out there, but blockchain can take care of it for smart contracts. If BL can be automated, why not? But if we stick to the notion that, oh, this cannot be done because this is the way it's supposed to be, simply because we don't understand enough, that is a problem for me. That's one of the areas. The next one is, of course, money. Simply money. You need to spend money in terms of, of course, if you are small SME having three trucks, investing into a 3,000 ringgit, a 5,000 ringgit SQL solution, or a, buying a simple software may be costly because you can take this 5,000, you probably can rent a truck, next month is already giving you a return. Whereas if you invest in IT, you don't see the returns. You do not see the way, the, 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 the return on investment that you have, you put $10,000 on it. I have come across situations where to automate a warehouse costs 100,000 ringgit, reluctant to do it because they, do, they are not able to spend that kind of money. That's the next one. The third one is the strategy itself. You need to have a digital strategy. You need to think through the digital. Where do you want to do? Are you tackling your growth dimension? Or are you? do you want to tackle your efficiency and process dimension? You need to have these two very, very clearly defined. Not simply, simply decide what kind of technologies. We need to have a very structured approach in terms of defining your, your strategy, your business, what do I actually want to decide? Why do I want to decide? Because I've got poor processes at the moment, and therefore there's inefficiencies, redundancies, manual work that I want to automate. Or if I now improve my interaction with my customers, with my providers, then therefore there's a top line growth for me. So you, we need to really think about what strategy we need to define. Clearly looking at from two dimensions. One is the growth, one is the value proposition. What is the growth strategy that you want to take in terms of a digitalization? The last one is risk. You have to take risks. You need to take risks simply because you may have to burn money. So again, I come from an environment where my organization was built because it, it is a research-based company. Research was a D, is, is in the DNA of the company in terms of finding new molecules. So they have got the research mentality to spend money on sandboxing on technologies, maybe burning a few million euros just to sandbox and technology. You burn money, you take the risk to do that simply because you want to digitalize. Where else are you able to spend that kind of couple of hundred thousand ringgit on a solution which may be outdated three years from now? Are you able to take that kind of a risk? Companies are not capable of doing that. Kind. Company has to consider this already to some extent. Be an SME or even a single operator. So again, these are the these are the key challenges that I feel, uh, which is which 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 impedes digital transformation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Suvash. For the uh, sake of our international audience, um, Prof. Raj, uh, Dr. Raj has mentioned about ringgit. Uh, basically, it is equivalent to one USD is equivalent to about 4.5 ringgit. Uh, 4 .5. So, uh, anything to add from you, uh, Major, Major Tang? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor. I mean, personally, um, as a practitioner or as a logistician, my company, we have started uh, going for IT. And we already started uh, IT orientated uh, for more than 15 years. And we have spent million dollars uh, into our systems. Even today, for our marketing team, for documentation team, export, import, ship operation, right up to HR everything is all about it right so we would not uh, say no to it but we will for sure support the growth of it right and we can see the changes in our industry or in our practices for example our export and import uh, documentation department we used to have about uh, uh, eight to nine uh, personnel for export documentations or another eight to nine personnel for import documentations and we used to have uh, even uh, a telex uh, room uh, personnel too and we have operation team a lot so but today with the technology we just need two right for import and export even for ship we have one coordinations 
uh, even with the um, the C C based uh, activity, right? So I'm talking about the station for each station. As far as uh, maritime logistic is concerned, we have uh, many stations. Uh, that means, in short, every single port of call, uh, every single port of call, we have one station, and each station we have many activities, and all those are IT driven. Uh, when it comes to technology. So we can see the changes and we can see the transformation. And of course, nothing is uh, definite. Uh, notwithstanding, we are going uh, even for a betterment, uh, going for a better environment. Today, or so-called last week, uh, last week, we have decided to even go to another uh, transformations of uh, system or so-called uh, new applications for our uh, communications uh, system. Uh, we would like to have a new applications to support our communication because today with the, with the technology, everything is real time and we need to have a faster speed. Even for our internet, uh, we have list line. Uh, we have list line. We have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for each station, we have about five to seven list line to make sure that we are not uh, left behind when it comes to com uh, communication or information flow. Uh, it is not easy. Of course, a uh, dollar and cent is always there. But when it comes to IT development, we have to say yes. Uh, we have to say yes and support the growth of the IT or technology, right? Uh, especially when it comes to uh, communications and the information flow. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Major, Major Chong. Uh, oh, any last words from you, uh, logistician Leong? Uh, yeah, um, I do agree to uh, uh, Dr. Raj a few points. Uh. The first one is the uh, we need more talent or logisticians in the industrial to bring uh, our, our system or our industrial practices to a higher level by a, a, a what I call like promote promote like a Malaysia as a logistic hub or any countries or, or with the talents to, to provide a solution to a customer in intermodal or multimodal. So the second point is that uh, because we are the uh, based on the uh, commercial or business organizations, profit is the main objective that the organization to assist. Okay. So by doing by implementing a smart technology, so in general, uh, Pros is more than cons, okay, but they still need to uh, depends on the organization uh, the capability in budget of spending. Either we have a short term planning to 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 go for smart technology or digitalization or long term or face by face or immediately. It depends on the uh, company budget, okay. So uh, sooner or later there will be a requirement, but in short terms, uh, depends on the situation is critical, non critical. When you implemented the smart technology, it give a lot of uh, value added services. Whether customer agreed to pay for it, they will let you increase the prices. There is a big pressure mark, especially uh, after the post pandemic situations. Every organization is suffering. Okay, thank you, Professor Xiao. Thank you, um, Logistician Leong, and uh, we have come to an end of the webinar that uh, discuss impact of smart technologies on supply chain. And uh, we have, uh, uh, if I can summarize, there, there is a need for a collaborative long-term relationship between the, uh, uh, in the supply chain. And uh, all this, uh, so the speakers have also supported the uh, growth of IT in the uh, supply chain, the, the smart uh, uh, technologies, uh, to, to enable this uh, supply chain, and uh, and uh, of course the 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 uh, challenges that uh, had been addressed just now, especially from Major Chong, was more on uh, training and human resources, and um, and then the uh, from uh, Dr. Durai Raj is the uh, also the whether the attitude of the uh, higher. Uh, Management and lastly, uh, Dr. Logistician Leong has also mentioned that different companies have experienced different uh, 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 challenges. So, 
With that, I would like to thank uh, the speakers again, Major T.S. Chang Kun Leong and uh, Logistician Leong Ka Kinwa and uh, Dr. Durai Rash uh, for having uh, spending their time and also talk about uh, logistic supply chain. And also I would like to thank my technical team, Mr. Andre and uh, Ms. Walili for, uh, for uh, navigating this uh, webinar. Thank you once again and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.